Aspire's got an up and down reputation with their games as of late, but they've done wonders for the handheld community in bringing several great Star Wars titles of the past to the Nintendo Switch, from the Force Unleashed to the Knights of the Old Republic series. And they keep going, having recently brought the famed original Battlefront games to the Switch and other platforms with high frame rates, online multiplayer, and some new characters not seen since the old original Xbox DLC. I've got a lot of great memories of Battlefront 2 on the PlayStation Portable, so let's dive right in. Here is my review of Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection for the Nintendo Switch. Story-wise, these games do still have their original campaigns. While the original Battlefront doesn't have a lot to its story mode, having basic mission objectives across both the prequel and the original trilogies, Battlefront 2 does something interesting. In its Rise of the Empire campaign, you follow the 501st Legion of Clone Troopers that eventually become Vader's Fist, from a bit before the events of Order 66 to the Imperial invasion of the Rebel base on Hoth during The Empire Strikes Back. It's not overly expansive with its dialogue, but it's interesting and something that Star Wars games normally don't do, with you staying on the side of the Empire for the entire campaign. The only downside to the story mode is the fact that the Switch version seems to be missing cutscenes for Battlefront 2's campaign. All of the mission intro scenes are here, but all of the mission outro briefings seem to be either missing entirely or just not spawning when a mission completes. When it comes to gameplay, this is a pair of shooting action games in both first and third person form. As you play through each mission, you will be shooting or slashing your way through enemy troops, taking over bases, and flying ships through space. Now first of all, let's get one thing clear that many people on the internet seem to have misunderstood. This is not a remake, this is not a remaster. It is a simple port of Battlefronts 1 and 2 to newer platforms, as is what Aspire pretty much has always done with their Star Wars Switch titles. Many people across the web have criticized this as a remaster or remake, and that's not what this is. Anyways, as a collection, this includes all the content originally in these games. You have instant action, online multiplayer, and the campaigns for both Battlefront 1 and Battlefront 2. This is a big plus for handheld fans, as the old PSP port of Battlefront 2 included only galactic conquest and instant action, having been missing the entire campaign and several of the game's maps. This collection can also do hero assault mode on pretty much any map, though the old PSP port can only do it in most Eisley. We've got returning cheat codes as well. In Battlefront 1, you can still use the cheat to access the full list of missions in the campaign, whether or not you've actually beaten those levels. And in Battlefront 2, if you're in a single player mode, you can still use the cheat codes for invincibility and infinite ammo, which will help immensely on the trickier campaign missions, most notably the Jedi Temple Assault. We've also got some new-ish content in the form of playable versions of Kit Fisto and Asajj Ventress in maps like the Yavin 4 Temple. I say newish because these were actually DLC for the original Xbox version of Battlefront 2 back in the day. Now let's get on to the actual game. Battlefront was a series aimed to give you a look at the, well, Battlefront of Star Wars battles. Not just the lightsaber duels, but the perspective of just some guy in the battle. A generic clone trooper, among others, fighting off battle droids on Geonosis. You can still play as heroes and villains in Battlefront 2, but it's more on battles as a whole as opposed to just the big and important scenes. How you do this is sort of like a numbers game. This is especially the case in Battlefront 1's campaign, which basically just has two teams on a map gunning each other down until one team loses all of its numbers. Though there is a little bit more to it than that. On each map, teams have command posts that you can change your class from and you can take over by wiping out nearby enemies and standing near it. You also have space battles where you can do ship to ship combat and take out crucial parts of cruisers to take out your opposing team. This was much further expanded when we get to Battlefront 2. In the first game, you have all unit types available with all of their loadouts, but in 2, you have to earn points by fighting and taking out enemies to be able to use the more advanced units. You can't just instantly use a droidica at the beginning of combat and abuse its portable shield. 2 also allowed you to swap in and play as your team's hero or villain after so many points are achieved, letting you go from shooting down enemies as a stormtrooper to ripping through them as Darth Vader. This also led to what I did the most in the old PSP port of Battlefront 2, Hero Assault. This was a game mode specifically just consisting of heroes and villains, having every player or AI involved running around as the likes of Leia, Vader, Boba Fett, General Grievous, Ayla Secura, and more. No regular troops, just sharpshooters, Jedi, and Sith. 
And all of this stuff you can do is reminiscent of multiplayer games, so of course we also have online multiplayer available. Though it is unfortunate that the game was not made with crossplay, so you're limited to playing with other Switch players, and even then limited to your specific region of the world. But thankfully you can make bot lobbies that players can join at any time if you just want the fun gameplay outside of instant action. Now a lot of this is fantastic with the nostalgia of the old Battlefront gameplay being available again, especially since a lot of hardcore Star Wars fans did not like the EA Battlefront games. But it's worth noting that these mechanics haven't exactly aged well. Both of these games, especially the first one, feel rather clunky with movement. The shooting and strong aim assist can help wonderfully, but it does feel rather stiff with moving the camera around at times, and especially in ship combat, with a control setup drastically different from the old versions of these games. The system does work though, and the more I think about it, the more I look at this as kind of a single player collection more than a multiplayer one. Sure, Battlefront works and is built for multiplayer, but as we'll find out in the next section, this collection functions all right as a multiplayer title and pretty good as a single player one. But moving on, as far as how much content and length there is here, it really depends on what you play these games for. I spent endless hours on the PSP port never once touching multiplayer and enjoying Galactic Conquest and Assault. With that in mind, each campaign should take you about five to seven hours to tackle and then however long you want to just play for fun. Next up is presentation and this is an interesting one. Visually, I think the game looks good. The visuals still have a bit of blockiness with the renders of these nearly two decade old titles, but everything looks smooth and crisp. Worlds above and beyond what the old PSP port of Battlefront 2 can do, and if you'd like a comparison, let's do so. Here is Battlefront 2's training mission on PC running on a Lenovo Legion Go. And here is that same training mission on the Nintendo Switch. The colors of textures are rendered a bit different between the two, but they look almost identical in terms of graphical quality. But let's get on to performance. This game targets 60 FPS on all platforms, including the Switch. When you're in a single player game, this is mostly achieved. It jumps around a bit, but retains a really smooth flow. In multiplayer, however, it can drop and get jittery. I found Hero Assault on Mustafar to have a lot of weird jumps and jitters when moving around. Yet when I went into the same map on Assault in single player mode, it was a beautiful 60 frames per second. And that brings us to battery life. The Battlefront Collection gives the original and light models a battery range of about three to four hours, while the V2 and OLED models get five and a half to seven hours. In conclusion, the first two Battlefront games have arrived on new handhelds, fully featured and with all their clunky, ripped, straight from the movie soundtrack music glory. Now on the downside, we seem to be missing cutscenes from Battlefront 2's campaign. The multiplayer will give you a lot of frame drops, and the lack of crossplay is unfortunate for those that want to play with their friends from across the world. All things considered, I view this as an okay port of a multiplayer game, but it's a pretty good port if you just stick to single player. Reviews to go rates Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection for the Nintendo Switch a 6.5 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. Thank you for watching and have a great day.